Hey everyone, switching over to the old smoke pole. It's muzzleloader season. Uh, it opened yesterday. Today's Tuesday. It goes for a 10 day season here in Wisconsin. Typical Wisconsin. Uh, one day it's single digits and five inches of snow on the ground. The next day it's 50 and rain, which is what is happening today. Been rain showers off and on. It's supposed to maybe snow tonight. Uh, so I'm gonna slip into our land over here. I haven't been over here for, at all during the gun season and it's been a while since I bow hunted it. So I don't know what's going on over here. I got a camera, show some deer here, here and there crossing in front of it. But I'm gonna slip into the old Hort blind because I don't wanna get wet. I just wanna be comfortable and just see what's going on out here. Yeah, I don't know if there's been any deer taken off the land or some other hunters that hunt it. My dad came over once, I think, during rifle, seen a bunch of deer, so maybe I'll see some stuff. There's rubs all over along here. Um, yeah, I got a couple hours to sit here, and I love muzzleloader season. I think I've shot more with the muzzleloader than the rifle in the last 10, 15 years. Less pressure, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to slip into the stand here and see if I can see some deer. I'm in the blind. It's been raining off and on all day. It actually stopped right now. It's real kind of foggy, hazy. I don't know. I got a feeling the deer are going to be moving. It's been a while since I had a good night over here. So, boy, this is comfortable in this blind. I could get really used to this. I wanted to hunt back there in the woods in Parker's stand. But I don't want to get all wet. <laughs> Alright, I got about 45 minutes left and I finally got some deer in the field. They're a long ways out though. 250 yards. Looks like a doe and two fawns maybe. I just look back and there's four deer <laughs> basically staring at me. They were probably 75 yards. The back where my truck is. So they're probably on alert already. I think when I turned my head, they could see right through the window, right into the window. So just because you're in a stand in an enclosed blind doesn't mean they can't see you. <laughs> I think it was four does. Alright, I'm back over. It's Thursday of the muzzleloader season. Um, Grandpa Tom is going to climb up in the Hort blind over there. I'm going to walk back in the Parker stand. Um, I don't know if I didn't look at the footage from when I was here two days ago, but I've seen a bunch of deer. But it was so hazy and foggy and I couldn't hardly see. I kept I kept thinking it was gotta be getting close to closing and it was still a half hour left. I could hardly see through the scopes. And one buck did come out behind here and uh, went this way. A bunch of the other deer were over here too that are north feeding in this cut soybean field. And I saw some up front in the cut soybean field. So they seem to be coming out here and they make their way to the back here and they come into this big grass field and then they kind of skirt the edge of the woods and they like down in that to the north I think it's a little lower a little more protected but it's a good wind today it's south and all the deer come from the south so hopefully we'll see some deer and a bunch of camera walking by the camera so we'll see what happens across the field in the Hort blind. 
nice and warm. And I'm sitting out here in the wind. It's a good wind, but it's cold. Two days ago it was 50, kind of rainy. Well, this morning it was 13 degrees. I think it's like 30 now, but it's it's blowing pretty good, so it feels a lot colder. We got a couple hours to sit. Hopefully I can make it that long. Kind of cold. I don't think I dress warm enough. But I'll tough it out. Hopefully get us a deer down. I don't need any does. Grandpa Tom will shoot a doe if he sees one. I just gotta have a nice big buck is what I'm looking for. Nice big buck. There is a really nice 10 pointer that was we seen a bunch earlier in the year. But I had a video of him just the other night and he sheared off all of his points except for maybe one. So I think he's gonna get a pass. <laughs> it's too bad. And then there's a couple other ones too, but they, a lot of them look pretty broke up right now. I don't know where the real big ones are that we saw bull hunting. I'm sure some of them are shot. But there's a bunch of does around. Small bucks. Hopefully we can get a shot at one. All right, it's a Sunday of muzzleloader season. We hunted, Grandpa and I hunted on Thursday. Yeah, I think it was. We didn't see anything, either of us. Um, and now Grandpa's up in the horse blind again. Parker and I are gonna go back in his stand. All right, we're just about set up. Like I said, it's a perfect wind. And uh, it seems like these deer, they either cut through in front of us here in the corner of the woods, or they come. There's a trail, like right here. There's another one in the woods farther. They come out into this grass field here. You can see there's trails cutting through all over. And as they come through the corner here, or a couple spots down the tree line. So we should be able to see them come. You can see way out in that field now. Earlier near you couldn't. They come through this little grassy field here. It's just full of trails. I know we've jumped them out of there too, bedded in there, but they go out and they cut and they eat in that, uh, there's cut soybeans over there. And then the north end, it goes way over and then there's cut soybeans up front where Grandpa Tom is. So they seem to come out and mill around in this grass a little bit first. Or I got a camera that's right in front of us here in this tree. And they're always walking this path a lot. <laughs> a lot at night, but I think uh the past couple of days they've been starting to come in in daylight. Yeah, there's been like yesterday there was a nice eight pointer that came in at two twenty fifty seven. Two fifty seven, yeah. Which is like an hour and a half yeah. before. I think he came out over there because he was kind of angling like this in front of the camera. That'd be perfect. We want yeah. something right in any of these two spots or anywhere in this grass field. You could easily shot him right there. Yeah. I mean the muzzle loader you can shoot basically anything on that soybeans too. I mean it's I think 150 yards to the other side of the soybeans. We only got a few minutes left. I think we saw nine does and a possum. But nothing to shoot at. One doe was behind us. I don't know where she went. All the rest around the neighbors filing up. Look like they're heading right towards my dad, but we haven't seen them come out in the field yet. They're probably in the woods milling around waiting for it to get dark. And Got a few minutes left, but I don't know. Not tonight, I guess. All right, it's the second Monday of Wisconsin's muzzleloader season. Uh, sat last night with Grandpa Tom and Parker. I think we saw nine does, but nothing close enough. 
they're moving on the neighbor's single file. Thought they were going by Grandpa Tom, but they stayed up in the woods and then they came out uh, up towards the truck, like right at close. So that's the problem right now. We're seeing there's a ton of deer moving around, but mostly at night. <laughs> Our cameras are just full of deer all night long. But every once in a while, they do come out a little earlier. So as we're hoping, it's just gonna be one of those nights where they start moving earlier because they're just flooding these soybean fields, just cut soybeans. And they're feeding out there all night. I did jump a doe on the way in, which was just standing right in front of the stand. So I think she was coming out in the field feeding. But she blew, of course, and took off. Not fast, though. She was just standing in the field out there, so she didn't know what was going on. So maybe that's a good sign. But it's super, super quiet. Like, eerily quiet. And I've been in the stand like five minutes. And the squirrels are driving me nuts already. It's all I hear in the back is squirrels. And I know one of them, all of a sudden, it's going to be a deer. So I gotta be really alert and not move. <laughs> oh, they're driving me nuts. I'll have to bring Peyton over here and do some squirrel hunting. Thin them out a little bit because there's a ton of them. Grandpa Tom's looking for a doe just to get some meat. I'm looking for horns. <laughs> there's one really good one that keeps coming in at night, sometimes right at dark. And then there's the one that's all shaved off, the 10 point, it's all broken. I think, I don't think I'll shoot him, but he's, he's going to be really nice next year. Let's see what happens. All right, it's like a minute later now, and I see a deer on the neighbors. Can't tell his head's down, it might be the one I jumped. Looks like a doe. Alright, it's only three o'clock. I'm seeing four now. They're all sneaking through the neighbors. Just going through that tall grass. Angling right towards Grandpa Tom. So they're moving this early, that's good. I'm hoping they're gonna pop out right by him. It'd be perfect. They're all in the woods, which he's sitting just outside of. Look like all doors so far. So that's a good sign.
there's deer all over. They said that the one's falling right under me, but they didn't want to come in the field. They jumped back over. And I got that broken up buck within range, right on front of us, in the beans. Damn it, he's all busted up. Pretty sure it's him. Let's go figure. Dang it. It's gonna be hard not to shoot though. <laughs> but I gotta be strong. But man, if he gives me a 30 yard shot. He's down. He's down. <laughs> I could. 
could not resist. He looks better in person than all these trail camera pictures. So I, uh, a moment of weakness, I guess. It's a good buck though, it's a big one. It's just too bad he's broken up, but he'll like, he'll make a nice skull mount. But he's laying dead right there. But the most amazing part ever about this whole story is I had two misfires on the, the muzzle loader. So I had to scramble for another two more, or another primer. Finally, he cleared the bush here, misfired again. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So I somehow got another one just in time because he was gonna cross back over. And this time it went off, so I guess he's a, he almost was a very lucky buck. I'm excited, I'm nervous. I, was, I got to watch him for like 20 minutes. So I guess I settled down a little bit. Dad saw him out there. He's like, I'd shoot him. Like, I don't know, I, was, I kept telling myself, I'm gonna let this one go, let this one go. But it's just been one of them years where I didn't have hardly any opportunities at Bucks all bowl season except for the first day, except for spikes and stuff. And here it is, day 80 of the Wisconsin hunting season. If you go all the way back to bow hunting when it started in September, when the grass is still green, we are mowing lawns, 70, 80 degrees. And here it is 80 days later with the muscle loader. And I finally got a buck on the ground. <sighs> I can't believe it. And it's only like 10 after four. We have to 442, I think today. So there was just deer everywhere. He came out and fed in the soybeans for a long time made his way in front of me and I think, I don't know what he was gonna do, but he kinda made a loop in front of me on this trail where they always walk and he was gonna head back out into the, the grass out there. But there was deer all over in there. And uh, they all went up to my dad so hopefully Grandpa Tom can get a doe tonight we can double down on deer for the muzzleloader season. I love muzzleloader season. Things seem to calm down. If there was deer moving from the second we got out here, it just, it was one of them nights where there, the deer were just everywhere. Well, I got down and he was crawling away through that grass field. I texted the neighbor. I go grab him, he said, yeah, no problem. And then I saw him move a little bit. Could barely see him through the brush. So I got down, snuck over there, and he's just crawling away. Shot him again, I think the first shot hit him in the shoulder. He might've been quartering away a little bit. So maybe I shot a little too far ahead. And then uh, busted that one shoulder for sure, he couldn't run. I'm sure I hit the lungs in there too. Eventually he would've, would've died, but I don't want him to sit there and suffer like that, so. Yeah, he's, a, he's busted up big time. <clears throat> but it was a 10 pointer, I think. <clears throat> but he's a big, big deer. I wouldn't doubt if he's 200 pounds. So, I'll take him. I'll take him this year. It's, it's, a, it's a good buck. Well, here he is, my uh, 2022 muzzleloader buck. Um, kind of hoped he had all his horns, but he was a scrapper, I guess. Busted them all off. We saw him early in the year with his full rack. I kind of told everybody don't shoot him, and then here I go and shoot him. <laughs> But uh, I couldn't resist, I don't know. I guess I don't get that many opportunities at too many good bucks. And um, 
he's a good one. He's heavy. I don't know. Uh, Parker's pretty excited. He was watching on the on the uh, trail camera at home as it walked by my stand and told me to shoot. So I had to listen to him. I Ooh, guess black. it's fine. It's still on. Just because it's so. We got him out. Hit him in the front shoulder. I think had to shoot him again, but he was laying in the grass on the neighbors and and uh, I guess I filled my buck take for 2022 just in the nick of time. Like I said, this is day 80 of our deer season and uh, we got her done. The deer were moving tonight. They were everywhere, just not in front of Grandpa Tom. I thought you get a doe tonight, but, but I'll take them. I'll, uh, we're gonna get them, I'll load them up and take them home.